Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a brand new pick a card for you guys today. And today we are asking the question, what can you expect for the upcoming season of spring? So yeah, springtime is coming up. It is right around the corner. Um, so yeah, that's super exciting. The snow is melting outside and the temperatures are starting to warm up. And, um, you know, the rain is starting to come in a little bit, but there's sun and flowers are starting to bloom and there are buds on the trees and all that good stuff that comes along with spring. So yeah, springtime is just about here and I figured this would be the perfect time, obviously, to do a spring related reading. So this is basically just going to be general messages, whatever it is that you need to hear, whatever it is that you need to know for the upcoming season of spring. And I know it's been a while since I've actually uploaded and recorded a um, pick up pick a card for you guys lately on this channel. Thankfully, I've been around to do my lives as usual, which I really try to stay consistent with because I know those are important to you guys. Um, but I do like to be able to bring, you know, pick a cards and stuff for you guys too, because I know those are fun as well. But um, I, I totally missed out on doing like a March pick a card and everything. Things have been so busy and hectic and crazy. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not going to launch into everything because that's kind of not the point of this video or this reading. But um, basically, I have been apartment searching. I've been thinking about moving. I'm not like 100% decided yet. There is one place I did kind of totally fall in love with though. Um, but yeah, I just have some big decisions I'm in the process of making right now. So um, that's kind of why I've been a little MIA basically. So between apartment searching and then I've been working on some like family related stuff that needed to be done, a lot of like personal things and healing and that kind of stuff that needs to be worked out. And if I do move, it's going to wind up being a cross country move. So this wouldn't be like, you know, across the street or something like that. So it's a lot of heavy duty stuff that I've been dealing with lately, which is why I haven't really been as consistent with videos. But um, hopefully from this point on, I'm going to try to be a little bit more and be a little bit more present now that some of the dust has settled with some things. I can be around a little bit more. But anyways, let's get into this pick a card stuff. Uh, just a quick little reminder before I introduce the piles, you guys, that I am live on this channel every Monday and every Friday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I would love to have you guys come on out for that and you can get a reading done. And we just kind of like hang out and chill and enjoy and talk and it's just a fun time. Um, there are a lot of cool people who wind up coming out for that. So definitely, if you guys want to hit me up on a live, you're welcome to join me for that. And if you have like several questions, you, you really want to like deep dive into something for a reading, or maybe you have some questions that are more personal that you would rather keep confidential and not bring to a live, you guys are always welcome to hit me up for a private reading as well. So I am open and available for, for private readings too. Um, so information for all of that stuff, the lives as well as private readings, exactly what I offer, the cost, all the other kind of stuff, it's all in the, des in the description down below. So check out the description and you can get all that information as where as where you can find me on my socials. I do readings over on TikTok. I do readings over on Instagram. So I'm kind of everywhere. So, um, you know, any of those those links that you see down there in the description, that's me. So anyways, that's kind of what's going on there. And of course, before you bounce out of this video, um, please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. And feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do know when I'm going live. And so you're also updated on when new uploads are posted. So 
Anyways, I definitely really appreciate that, you guys, but let's go ahead and introduce these piles and jump into this to see what is in store for you this spring. So pile number one is an amethyst. It's a pretty little amethyst stone. Pile number two is opalite. It's a little opalite crystal. Pile number three is angel aura quartz. And my dog is licking himself in the background there, so don't mind him. <laughs> But that's just shadow, that's just what he does. And pile number four is another amethyst, but this one is more in the form of a cluster kind of shape. But this one is pile four. So anyways, um, go ahead and pick the crystal that resonates with you the most or, you know, the pile number, the pile timestamp, however it is that you like to choose, whatever it is that makes you comfortable and, you know, basically just vibes with you, right? So go ahead and pick the pile that you think would be best for you. Timestamps are, of course, down below. And let's go ahead and jump into things here with pile number one, the first amethyst. Hi, pile one. If you chose this lovely little amethyst crystal, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out what is in store for you for the season of springtime. All right. Fun stuff. Good, good. We're going to start things off here with your tarot cards from the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. And you guys got the Seven of Wands, the Hermit, the Four of Cups, and the Page of Swords. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive into your tarot cards first and then we'll go ahead and get into the rest of um we'll go ahead and we'll get into the rest of your oracle cards here basically okay so let's see I feel like going into springtime at the very start of springtime what it seems to be might be going on with you guys is we have the Four of Cups and the Hermit. And I feel like these two are kind of connected here. So I feel like maybe coming out of the winter time, going into the spring, this may have been you guys. Like, I feel like your winter may have quite literally been, like, a winter season. Not just in terms of the weather outside and, you know, long nights and it being cold and everything. But I feel like for you guys... um, it was kind of like a winter season in your life, you know, maybe emotionally and mentally dealing with situations and circumstances in your life. It could have been involving family or friends or finances or love or your job or whatever it is. But I feel like you guys were kind of going through a season of winter quite literally recently. And I feel like one of the reasons you guys were experiencing that is basically a spirit of stubbornness because that's what the Four of Cups is all about. Um, as you can see on this card, this unicorn is fixated and focused on these three cups that are down here. But yet, up here, there is a fourth cup that is being offered to this unicorn. And usually the cup that is being offered, it's something of worth, it's something of value, it's something that we want, it's something that's good for us. But this unicorn is not accepting that cup. As wonderful and as amazing as it is, it's not accepting that cup. Instead, it's focused on the other three that are down there below it. 
and it's it's missing out on an opportunity basically this unicorn is missing out on an opportunity simply because it's being stubborn and it's probably being stubborn because it's stuck in these like old habits and old mind frames and just completely misses out basically so this may have been you guys during the winter time so i feel like crossing over now from winter into spring this may have been where you guys have been at, but I feel like you guys know, you know deep down that being stubborn like this isn't necessarily helping your situation. It's not helping what's going on with you. So I feel like with you guys knowing that, it has sent you into a place of going within and going into hermit mode. That's how I feel like those two cards are connected. I feel like being stubborn for so long is going to ultimately send you to a place of going within. <laughs> um, because sometimes if, you know, we just keep thinking and trying and doing the same thing over and over and over again, and it's not working and it's not going right, um, you know, we get to our breaking point with that. And it's like we kind of have no choice in a sense but to surrender because everything else that we're doing just isn't going right. It's not going well. So, Instead, you wind up basically going within, and that's what the hermit does. The, the hermit goes within. Um, it's a lot of time in prayer. It's a lot of time meditating. It's a lot of time just kind of like you and God, you and the man upstairs, basically communicating and figuring things out. Um, sometimes it's a time of solitude, and I know it feels like the entire past year has been a time of solitude because of COVID. So I know that's probably the last thing you want to hear right now is, oh, there's going to be more time of solitude. And it may not necessarily mean in such a physical, literal sense, like what has been going on for the past year. But just in terms of you taking care of yourself, you may need to kind of like separate yourself from not the good things in your life, but maybe the things that have been draining on you so you can kind of refresh and rejuvenate yourself being in hermit mode. And I feel like once you guys have done that, um, you guys are going to gain your strength coming out of, you know, whatever was kind of holding you back through the winter. You're going to gain your strength back. And that's kind of what the Seven of Wands is about. The Seven of Wands is about not surrendering. It's about not giving up. It's about not backing down. It's about continue to fight fight and push through and persevere. Um, so I feel like ultimately this is what you guys are going to wind up doing. You're going to wind up pushing through and pressing on. Um, but it's going to be in a positive direction. It's going to be in a better direction. It's going to be in a better direction where, where you will be ready to receive that fourth cup that's being offered to you. And with that, with the Page of Swords, the Page of Swords usually represents a new way of thinking. Um, it is like kind of a refresher, a renewing of the mind, basically. So it's a new way of thinking. It's a new way of being. It's a new way of speaking, basically, since swords are all about our thoughts. It's all about our thought life. Um, so I feel like ultimately coming out of that hermit mode, you guys are going to have a refreshed and renewed mind. Um, and I feel like our mind frames, you know, that's such a huge part of what develops our life and what shapes our life because, you know, our thoughts affect our emotions, our emotions impact what we say, what we say become our actions, our actions become our character. And, and you see where this is going here. It's like a snowball effect, you know, totally just ricochets off of one another. It determines our entire life, basically, and it all starts in the mind. And a lot of the times you have to think of your brain as like a computer. You know, if you have a computer, if you have a smartphone, if you have anything like that, um, chances are you get software updates that come in every once in a while and you have to upgrade the software within your phone or your computer or whatever gadgets that you have. If you don't, then it's not really going to be oper it's not going to be able to operate correctly with the new app updates and everything else that's coming out and always being new and always being updated. It's not going to be able to run. It's not going to be able to function properly. It needs those updates, especially if those updates involve bug fixes. 
So think of your brain as that. You know, your brain is kind of like a computer. You got to do those software updates on your mind, basically, because if you just stay in the old way of thinking, you're never going to be able to move forward and make progress. So there's this continual renewing of our minds, and it's a lifelong, lifelong process. This never stops, <laughs> you know? It's like every time you think you have it together, then you're just like, oh, wait, but there's more. There's more I can learn. There's more I can realize and grow from. And there's new revelations and new epiphanies I can get out of this situation. So that's kind of um, what that's like. But I do feel like you guys are going to have like a completely new train of thought process here in a sense coming out of this hermit time. Um, but it's going to be better. It's going to be like this renewed frame of mind. Like I was saying, you guys, you're no longer going to be stubborn coming out of it, which is a good thing. It's going to reposition you guys coming into the springtime. Okay, let's see what your sacred creator's oracle cards have to say. We have rise, gratitude again. And Creator Alchemy. All right, you guys. So with these cards, I feel like with gratitude again, um, you know, once again, with that renewing of the mind that you guys are going to wind up having, that you guys are going to wind up coming out of um, from this hermit mode and everything, I feel like you guys are going to find a renewed sense of gratitude, a, new, a renewed sense of thanksgiving in a sense for the things that you have in your life. Um, it could even be for the things that maybe you've been frustrated with, you know, if you've been frustrated with, um, you know, whatever this is, whatever this situation is, you know, it could be love, it could be your career, take it as it resonates, obviously, but whatever it is that you've kind of been stubborn with, you could wind up having such a new perspective that you're going to be like, wow, you know, I really don't have it as bad as I thought I did, you know, like I have so much more to be thankful for. Like, let's say, for example, your issue was maybe your job and you were feeling like you were in a slump and you were feeling stuck or something like that. And then you have this time in hermit mode or whatever, and then you realize, well, wait a minute, it could be so much worse. I have a job, you know, like I have a way to pay my bills. I have a way to, um, you know, take care of all of my expenses, you know, feed myself, take care of my family, whatever it is. Like I have ways to do this. Um, not everybody does. So uh, it may not always be perfect all the time, but at least I can do it. And I always have space and room to improve it if I don't necessarily like where I'm at right now. So I feel like you guys are going to have a renewed sense of Thanksgiving. And with Creator Alchemy, you know, especially with the Seven of Swords here and that sense of never giving up, um, you know, continuing to persever persevere or, I'm sorry, Seven of Wands. I think I said Seven of Swords. <laughs> I meant Seven of Wands. We kept talking about the Page of Swords here. I got them mixed up. Um, but anyways, yeah, with you guys having the Seven of Wands here with the whole sense of never giving up and continuing to persevere, I feel like once again, this renewed sense of mind that you guys are going to be coming out of here, um, it is going to take you to a place where you're going to want to be more creative too. Like not only are you going to be thankful, but it's going to push you to like take action in a creative way out of it. Um, which this could look like many different things to many different people, but I feel like it's definitely going to push you to a creative space. You know, maybe you're going to want to journal or write music or, um, you know, create art or something. There's going to be something that you're going to be inspired to do that is going to be creative. That's just going to kind of naturally flow out of you. And then with the rise card, I feel like bottom line is you're just going to feel ready to rise up. You're going to feel, like I said, it's, it's almost like you guys are quite literally going to be feeling very much so the spring energy. Springtime is a time where things are kind of coming out of hibernation, where things are, um, where things that once looked dead during the winter time are starting to gain life again and their blossoms 
and things are starting to bud and bloom and all this beautiful stuff. And things are basically rising up. Things are rising out of the ground and that kind of thing. And I feel like that's what you guys are going to do. You're going to be rising out of this time of winter. So it's like you guys are, are right there. You guys are right there in line with what's happening with the seasons. We also have some cards from the Ice Cream Oracle. And let's see what you guys got. Moon Mist, Astral Travel Visions and Visitations. Salted Caramel, Performances, Costumes and Mischief. And Kiwi Strawberry, Youthfulness, Optimism and Exuberance. Okay, so I feel like you guys are definitely quite a spiritually in tune group, number one, because we have, with Moon Mist here, astral travel, visions, and visitations. So I feel like you guys are probably already a pretty, um, pretty knowledgeable, pretty spiritually down group. You know, you guys may even, you know, read cards yourself or something like that. You know, you may be a healer. Um, you may guide people through meditations. You may be into like the star seed thing, you know, a whole bunch of that different kind of stuff. But I feel like you guys are very aware and very knowledgeable of it. I don't feel like you guys are necessarily newbies. You're not um, rookies or anything. You guys are veterans. Um, and I feel like I feel like you guys definitely spend a lot of time astral traveling. So I feel like you guys are my tired group as well. Um, <laughs> Because usually if you're someone who is a heavy-duty astral traveler, astral traveler, I feel like I can't talk now, um, you're usually pretty tired a lot simply because on a spiritual level, on a soul level, you never actually rest. It's like you go to sleep at night and yeah, your body is technically at rest, but you yourself are astral traveling, you know, like you're still busy and you're still out there and you're still doing things. So you never really actually rest. Um, and I feel like you guys are definitely gifted. You guys probably get, you know, your own visions and signs and synchronicities. And you're probably very well aware of this. So I feel like this is just confirming that and just to, you know, kind of keep doing what you're doing. Um, pay attention to those signs. Pay attention to those synchronicities. That kind of thing. Um, with Salted Caramel, with performances, costumes, and mischief, I, I feel like on the flip side, you guys are really good at pointing out a good actor, basically. You guys are really good at pointing out, um, you know, the fakers and, um, you know, who's not being real, who's not being true and authentic and transparent, that you guys can spot the bullshit from a mile away. So I feel like you guys are really good at picking up on that. You guys are really good at recognizing that and detecting that and just calling people out on their bullshit, you know, with their performances, you know, when they put on an act, when they wear a mask. I, I don't mean like quite literally in public. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> like they wear a mask, like they're not showing who, who their truth self is, not like a face mask, like we have to because of COVID stuff. But, um, you know, you guys are able to pick up on this well. You guys are able to pick up on um, people who purposely basically cause mischief because they're not real with others. And considering this card did come out and, you know, I feel like you guys are very in tune with what is real and what is not here. Um, this is just something to be aware of that you could come across a couple of people, maybe one or two people who may attempt to pull the wool over your eyes or if not your eyes because this person may be very well aware that um you can like sniff them out from a mile away basically um if not you they may try to pull the wool over someone's eyes who is close to you someone that you may love or care about so you may have to kind of go on like you know big sister or big brother kind of mode, like protective mode on them or something. So I would definitely be careful, be aware of that just in case. Um, you know, that person may or may not come along during the springtime season. If they don't, then I feel like this is just a reminder that you are really good at detecting um, bullshit, bottom line. You guys have a good bullshit detector. 
and you guys got kiwi strawberry youthfulness optimism and exuberance so i feel like um you know kind of once again going back into that renewal of springtime energy i feel like you guys are definitely going to have a renewal in even your own youthfulness you know because it's like when you're young, when you're a kid, you have all this energy, you have so much energy that you're just ready to burn and, you know, just like go out there in the world and you don't care about anything basically because you're young and you're okay with being young and dumb in a sense. Um, so I feel like the spring season is going to bring you a lot of optimism into your mind that you're going to feel a lot better about things a lot more positive a lot more optimistic and you're going to feel like this sense of youth and feeling young again too so I mean if you are really young then I feel like that's just emphasizing like yeah you're going to have a great time and if you're someone who's a little bit older you know if you're 50 you may feel like you're 25 kind of a thing so um yeah, so I feel like there's definitely the, going to be this sense of kind of youth and excitement. Um, I also have a few cards here from Amira's Love Oracle because I did want to check in for a little bit of love for you guys um, for the spring season. You know, this is kind of just general stuff here. This could be in regards to love. It could be in regards to your career or family or finances or, you know, whatever's going on in your life, your health, whatever whatever it resonates with, but this would be more so dealing with love, so I know you guys definitely want to know what's happening in love, but let's see what you guys got. Ooh, ouch. We have short term. We'll see what's going on there. We have friendship, and we have triangle. Ooh, Okay, all right, I'm starting to connect the dots a little bit here as to what may be going on. So remember how I was just telling you guys about the person who may come along who may be a little bit fake, a little phony, um, you know, someone that you're basically going to see right through with the bullshit and everything. I feel like that is connected to this um, short-term love triangle situation. So I, I kind of see this going one of two ways. So I feel like it's either you or someone who's close to you, basically. So I feel like either you, the viewer, may wind up coming across somebody during the springtime who may try to pull the wool over your eyes here, be a, be a good actor, you know, get you into a little bit, trub a little bit of trouble here, and they may not be completely straightforward with you and, um, you know, basically kind of have you as like a side piece or something when they may be committed elsewhere, when they may have a relationship somewhere else. So they may want to try and cheat on their person with you or something like that. Um, so there's definitely a little bit of sensing of that. And if they do try to do that and since, you know, once again, you're a good bullshit detector here, you know, you know your standards, you know, you know what's best for you, you know where you stand. Um, it's not going to pan out, obviously, because, um, you know, love triangles usually don't have a very good record of being long term. So I feel like that's definitely going to be something that would end quick and be short term. It would probably honestly only last, I would say, probably during the spring summer or during the spring season, I don't feel like it would be something that would even make it all the way to summer, that it would be done by the time summer rolls around, basically. And as for friendship, um, I feel like, once again, if that situation with the love triangle being short term and all that kind of stuff, if, if that winds up happening to you, I feel like this is basically saying that your friends are going to be there for you through that situation, that your, your friends are going to support you and they're going to lift you up. They're going to pick you up when you're feeling down and you're going to have support through it. So you're definitely not going to be alone. Um, so I definitely feel like it's that for some of you. Now, for others of you, I feel like it's not 
even you who's going to wind up experiencing this love triangle or the short-term situation. For others of you, I feel like it is going to be a friend who winds up experiencing this and winds up going through that. And you're probably going to be the voice of reason trying to warn your friend like, hey, don't get involved with this person. They're shady. They're full of bullshit. They're going to screw you over. You don't know what you're getting yourself into kind of a thing. And, you know, the thing that they'll wind up getting themselves into is a love triangle, basically. And they're going to wind up getting their heart broken because this isn't something that is sustainable. But, of course, because you love your friend and you're there for your friend, you're going to wind up being there for them. And, you know helping them lick their wounds basically after the whole situation blows up. So I feel like it's one of those two situations. It's either going to be you who's going to get trapped in it, the viewer who's watching, or it's going to wind up being a friend of yours. Um, and you know, you being the spiritual badass that you are, you're probably going to be able to pick up on this technically before it even happens. Um, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like for most of you guys, it's probably going to be the latter than the first one, simply because I feel like you guys are going to be in a good place with everything else that's going on coming into the springtime, with the fact that, you know, you're going to be spending this time going within, with the fact that, you know, you guys are going to be discovering a new way of thinking, a new way of being, you're going to be letting go of your stubborn old habits from the winter, you're going to be finding new things to be thankful for. You're going to be rising up and finding new ways to be creative and everything. So I feel like you guys are going to have this whole other thing going on with your life and with what you're doing. But I do feel like if it's not you, it's definitely going to be a friend. And I feel like you really need to look out for this friend because they're really going to need your love. They're really going to need your support through this entire crazy situation. It's almost like... I don't even know if spring break is even happening this year because of COVID, but it's almost like they meet someone on spring break or something, and it it turns into like a much longer than necessary nightmare kind of spring fling, <laughs> if that makes any kind of sense. Um, so yeah, I feel like for most of you though, it's probably going to be a friend. I hope for most of you, it is the friend rather than you, the person watching. Not that I want your friends to go through any pain either because I don't, but unfortunately somebody will, whether it's someone who is around you or um, you yourself. But you're, you're going to know either way whether that clicks or whether that resonates. But I do feel like a lot of this stuff over here will probably resonate for you guys and just like that hermit mode thing and coming out of that with a renewed and refreshed sense of mind. So anyways, let me get you guys your Jesus card. Because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. And you guys got... Forgive and you shall be forgiven. Luke 6, 37. So forgiveness is obviously very important. <laughs> um, you know, that's like... If you're not forgiving someone, that's like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die kind of a thing. It just doesn't work. Um, so I feel like for some of you guys, the forgiveness here, it may be in regards to this crazy love triangle here. If you're the one who gets caught up into it, you may have to, you know, forgive the person who winds up wronging you here and putting you in this short-term um, love triangle, what it comes down to, or if it's your friend who gets caught up into it, you may still have to forgive that person because you may be so mad at that person for simply hurting your friend that you may be in like protection mode where you're just going to be so pissed off that you need to cool your own jets basically. Um, so yeah, I, I, I feel like there may be someone that you may need to forgive. And even if it's not dealing with this situation, because you guys have been stubborn, there may be something else in your life that you may need to forgive someone or something. It could even be like situational or circumstantial where you, you may need to 
do a little bit of forgiveness because sometimes if we're being stubborn about things too, it's usually because we're holding on to something that, you know, we need to let go that we may need to forgive. So that may be a possibility as well. So anyways, hopefully this reading made sense and helped you out. Um, if the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. It's not a big deal. But if it did resonate, please let me know and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you, even if it's just with a simple, small emoji. It definitely goes a long way. And please give this video a big thumbs up. That helps me out a lot too. Feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. And also so you guys know when I'm going live. And then you can come on by and participate and be a part of that as well and get a reading done. So anyways, um, yeah, I am just so incredibly grateful and thankful that you guys decided to stop on by and hang out here with me for a little bit today. It definitely means the world to me and it warms my heart. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, pile two. If you chose this opalite crystal, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out what is in store for you for this spring season. Fun stuff. All right. So we are going to start things off here with your tarot cards from the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. And you guys got the Queen of Wands. The Nine of Swords, the Ten of Swords, and the Empress. Wow, really interesting, you guys. So, first of all, I feel like it's safe to say that whoever's watching this right now is probably a feminine. Um, I know I get a lot of, you know, women, a lot of divine feminines who, you know, come and watch these readings anyway, which is totally cool and totally fine. But I feel like this definitely um, confirms it because we have the Queen of Wands and the Empress. So the Empress is the embodiment of all the queens, actually. So she has the Queen of Wands in her, but she has all the others in her too. You know, she has the Queen of Wands, or the Queen of Wands, I just said that, the Queen of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and the Queen of Pentacles. So she's the embodiment of all of them. Um, the Queen of Wands, she is, you know, she's very sexy. She's very attractive. She's very magnetic. Um, she has, like, that personality that just draws you in. Um, you know, she's not shy. She's extroverted. Um, you know, it's like she's got that star quality. It's like you could be watching a group of people singing and dancing, for example. You could be like watching, I don't know, like say it's like a Broadway show or something and you're watching the ensemble sing and dance. Usually when you watch something like that, your eye normally only goes to like one or two people rather than seeing the entire group, like just in terms of who you're focused on. And usually whoever you're focused on is like that star quality. And that's basically what the Queen of Wands is. She's someone who has that star quality. She has lots of passion. She has lots of fire and drive and desire. She's like that triple threat, you know? Um, so that's like what the Queen of Wands is. But, you know, the, the Empress, she has those qualities that the Queen of Wands has inside of her, but she has the other ones too, you know? She's grounded, like the Queen of Pentacles. She's full of self-love, like the Queen of Cups. And she's very logical about things, like the Queen of Swords, basically. So she has all those qualities. But considering we have the Queen of Wands with the Empress, I feel like you guys are, yes, an embodiment of all the queens, but with an emphasis on the wands. I feel like that's probably your strong suit. It's probably your strongest quality out of all of those qualities, basically. So especially at this time, I feel like you guys are, are very fired up. You're very passionate about something going on in your life, something happening in your world. 
And really, I mean, these two cards coming out together, just in terms of like feminine energy and fem feminine power and everything, you guys are powerful. You guys are powerful feminines. You guys are like badass, kick-ass women, basically. Um, you guys slay, like you get it done. You are, you know, basically the girl boss, basically, is what it comes down to. But sometimes it's hard. It's hard being in that position because just because you are a queen, just because you are an empress, doesn't mean life, the world, other people. It doesn't mean that everybody else knows that and understands that because I feel like you guys are going through a really hard time. And I feel like during the spring season, there may be some difficult endings coming in for you guys. Because that's what the Ten of Swords is about. The Ten of Swords is about painful endings. So there may be some painful endings that are going to be happening for you guys during the springtime. Um, and, you know, take it as it resonates because this could be in regards to anything. It is a general reading. There are going to be plenty of people who are going to come here to this. So, you know, it could be in love. It could be in your career. It could be with family, with finances, with friends. It could be in any area of your life. You know, for one person, it could be love. For another person, it could be their career. So take it as it resonates. But I do feel like there's a painful ending that's happening for you guys during the springtime. And it, it's definitely going to be painful because with the Nine of Swords, that is all about anxiety and sleepless nights. So this painful ending, you, you, you guys are not going to be handling it well. You know, to be perfectly honest and truthful, you guys are just not going to be handling it well. You could even be in this type of mode as it is already. You may know exactly what this thing is and exactly what I'm talking about because you could already be in this spot. Um, but yeah, like it's it's something that keeps you up at night. It keeps... It, something that stresses you out it gives you anxiety it's just it's really upsetting it's something that just like makes your stomach churn kind of a thing so I feel like you guys are unfortunately really going through the ringer right now dealing with that um and you know I I hear you guys I I feel you like that stuff is not easy to go through whatever this is it's hard it's challenging you guys definitely deserve better than that but since you guys are the queen of wands and you are the empress at the same token you guys are not weak you guys are way stronger than you know you guys are strong you guys are confident you guys are smart um you guys have a lot of things to offer the world and you guys have so much more strength and confidence on the inside than you even realize you guys are like inner warriors basically so Whatever this is that's causing a lot of pain that's ending, you guys are going to get through it because you guys are super strong. You guys are the empress. You guys are the queen of wands. You know, you guys are not, you know, flimsy little pages just trying to make it through life, basically. You guys can do this. You guys got this. You guys are stronger than you know. And always remember, even if it is a painful ending right now, whatever this is, every time there is an ending, there is always a new beginning. There's always something new that's going to be starting. So, you know, there could be something new that could be coming in for you. Um, if not during the spring, it could be happening by the summer. All right. You guys also have some cards here from the Sacred Creators Oracle. And you guys have... The Spark of Hustle. Ambush your fear with your ferocious dream. And the edge of evolution always feels messy. Ooh, yes. So you guys are definitely going through a season of transformation right now through the springtime. Because, you know, this painful ending here, whatever this is, that is what this edge of evolution is is messy is all about. Um, the messiness obviously is the passing away of this, whatever this is. And, you know, honestly, out of all the cards in this deck, this tarot deck, this one is my least favorite because it's a dead unicorn. Like it's bleeding. It is bleeding everywhere. Like I can't stand this card. Like I love unicorns. They're so cute and they're so adorable. And I hate the fact that 
it's dead and it's stabbed and it's bleeding and dying like everywhere like it it just makes me sad I don't like it but it's messy it's messy and that's what you guys have here you guys have a mess um but that's simply because you guys are evolving whatever it was that ended needed to end so this new beginning can begin um and it's not easy it really isn't um I do feel like for some of you this is career related because we also have the spark of hustle and you know whenever I think about hustling I always think about someone's career basically it's like every day you rise and you grind you rise and you grind you rise and you grind you know every day you're hustling 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 kind of thing so you know that's what I think of is you know the hustle basically um, because when you think about relationships, for example, you don't think about hustling in your relationships, you know, <laughs> that sounds more like um, if you're hustling your friends or you're hustling your boyfriend or something like that, it makes it sound like, I don't know, like you're trying to manipulate them <laughs> or something. Um, so with the spark of hustle, I definitely feel like this is something career related. So I do feel like for several of you, this painful ending may be dealing with your career. Maybe you guys are going through a career transition. Maybe a job that you really loved and that you really enjoyed is ending. And, you know, no longer having that job is bringing you anxiety and sleepless nights. And, you know, even maybe the loss of finances and not knowing how you're going to pay your bills necessarily could be bringing anxiety and sleepless nights. But it could be opening this whole brand new door for you guys with your career um, to do something new. You know, there could be a better job opening for you somewhere else. Or maybe this is an opportunity to become an entrepreneur and become your own boss and do your own thing and do your own hustle. So it could be a whole bunch of different things like that. But either way, I feel like you guys know exactly what this is because it is your dream. Whether it's a career thing or whether it's something else, it is your dream. Ambush, fear, with your ferocious dream. So, you know, once again, the Nine of Swords is all about fears. You know, when you're up at night and you're tortured by your thoughts and your worries, when you have all this anxiety and you can't sleep, it's coming from a place of fear. And fear is false evidence appearing real. So I feel like, um, you know, if you guys want to beat out those sleepless nights, you got to start the hustle here and you got to start going for your dream and even if you're starting from scratch even if you're at ground zero and you have no idea what to do if you have no idea how to do anything just start start somewhere if you don't know what to do research you know google is your best friend you know start researching you know if you you're learning how to try and do a certain type of business or you want to try and do something you know, type into the Google search or whatever, how to blah, blah, blah this, how to blah, blah, blah that. Um, you know, all you got to do is start. And that doesn't mean that you got to pour in 12 hours a day to your new dream. You know, even if it's just like for 30 minutes or something at first during the day, you know, just put in a little bit of time, put in a little bit of effort, do something to put in that effort towards that dream and if you're a little bit further along and you know what that dream is and you've kind of already been dabbling in it you're being asked to step it up go a little bit deeper do a little bit more get a little bit more involved in it whatever it is this springtime because the more you do it the more you're going to be able to conquer those fears the more you're going to get past that and then before you know it you're not going to be having sleepless nights anymore and you're going to start having more comfort and you're going to start having more rest because you're going to be doing what you're meant to be doing and feeling more secure be because of that. And I feel like whatever it is you're supposed to be doing, you're going to be very fired up about it and you're going to be very passionate here because that's who the Queen of Wands is. She is very fired up and she's very passionate about her dreams and her goals. We also have some cards here from the Ice Cream Oracle. And you guys got Chocolate Vanilla Swirl, Complementary Opposites, Fairness, Equality. Maple, Kindness, Friendship, Support. And Blueberry, 
peace, meditation, and acceptance. So I'm going to start things off here with this blueberry card as long as I got it in my hand. And I feel like in regards to whatever the painful ending is that's happening here during the springtime, another way that's going to help you get past some of your fears, anxieties, and sleepless nights is going to be prayer and meditation. You know, yes, of course, you know, go for your dreams and your goals. Start doing that hustle. Start doing what needs to be done. Yes, do those things. That's going to help. But also spend time in prayer and spend time in meditation because um, that's going to help you get grounded. It's going to help you find direction and what you're supposed to be doing. And it will bring you peace. Um, you know, our our relationship with God, you know, our relationship with spirit, source, whatever you want to call it up above, that is just as important of a relationship that needs to be nurtured and attended to as any other relationship in life. And this is why I am not a big fan of basically calling it religion, because to me, religion is rules and regulations. It's a way to control people, um, that kind of thing. But relationship is completely different. You don't control anything out of relationship. It is connecting. It is communicating. It's openness. It's vulnerability. It's transparency. It's authenticity. And I feel like if you're sitting down and you're being real and you're being honest with God and you're having that exchange with him, he's going to help you out so much through this period of difficulty that you may experience during the spring. And you will ultimately find peace. And another way you'll probably find peace is acceptance because um, you know, these painful endings, they can be really, really difficult, but eventually there will be a point of acceptance when it comes to that. And, um, that's going to help bring a lot of peace and ability to move on in conjunction with that. As you guys are going through this, um, evolution of messy times right now during the spring, I feel like you guys won't be alone. You guys are definitely going to have support. You're definitely going to have a, a, a group around you that is going to assist you and help you because we also have maple, which is kindness, friendship, and support. So I feel like you guys are very blessed and very fortunate to have good friends around you who love you, who support you, who understand you. Um, they're going to encourage you and basically um, be your cheerleaders during this difficult time, you know? Um, and that's, that's the beautiful thing, you know, when we're going through difficult times and sometimes we don't know what to do, it's always good to have a, a friend to lean on and talk to who's going to be there to su be supportive and be encouraging and being understanding. And I feel like your friends are, are obviously going to be very kind to you as well. With chocolate vanilla swirl, complementary opposites, fairness, and equality, um, I feel like at first, you know, when this stuff first happens, you're going to feel the opposite. You're going to feel like things are not fair at all, <laughs> um, like the world is ending. Because I think when anyone is kind of in this ten of swords, painful endings type of position dealing with anything, it feels like nothing is fair. And that's understandable. Like, that's... A totally legit thing to feel. But I do feel like that's eventually going to turn around, probably with acceptance, with time and acceptance, and you know, you spending that time in prayer and meditation, and you starting to pick up the pieces of things, and you know, chasing after your dreams, and chasing after your goals, and turning things around, um, you will eventually find that there is fairness once again, that there is equality once again, that, you know, the scales will shift, the, the scales will balance, you know, there will be justice, that things will be made right in the world again where there has been wrong. I do feel like you will find that. Um, that may happen like later in the spring, especially if this happens towards the beginning of spring, that may happen later, that may happen closer to summer, but I do feel like you guys will get to that place and that will happen. Um, 
I also have a few love related cards here from Amira's Love Oracle. Um, even though this is a general reading for spring, you know, I figured it would be good to tap into at least a little bit here love related for you guys. Um, just to see what you need to know dealing with your love life. Since I know a lot of you guys do want to know what is happening love-wise as usual. So let's see what you guys got. We have money. Well, this is kind of funny because I was talking about career stuff here primarily from what I was getting here, you know, with, you know, the hustle and, you know, that kind of thing. So I do feel like the money card coming out just kind of emphasizes the fact that a lot of what's going to be happening for you guys is definitely going to be tied to your career. It's going to be tied to your job. It's going to be tied to finances and that kind of thing. So... I know that doesn't necessarily say anything about love necessarily, but I, you know, considering you guys did get the money card and we have these other things going on here, I feel like this is just confirmation here that we are right on the money <laughs> about the um, transitional shift probably happening for you guys in your career at this time during the spring. We also have communication and we have Mature Man, um, which is really funny because, I mean, I got to be honest with you guys, I'm not getting like a huge lovey-dovey kind of vibe here from this group, even though, um, you know, like usually the love oracle cards are supposed to be for love. Um, so here, here's what I'm getting from this. I feel like maybe for a couple of you guys, a smaller group of you guys, you could receive communication from an older man if, but this is only if you are connected to someone who is an older man. You know, if, you, if you're not connected with somebody who is basically like, let's say, for example, eligible to get a COVID shot. Um, if you're not involved with somebody like that, then um, this, then it's probably not for you. But for some of you, I feel like, you know, if you are connected with somebody who is on the older side or, you know, maybe they're at least older to you, for example, you know, maybe you're 20 and he's 30 or something. He doesn't have to be like that eligible, I guess, for an, a COVID shot. But if he's just older, if he's older than you or older in general, um, you could be receiving communication from um, a man who's older than you that you could be romantically involved in. But I feel like that's a limited number of you. I feel like the bigger number of you, though, once again, going back to this career stuff, because we did have money come out, too, dealing with this. And I, I feel like for most of you guys, after seeing how all of this has really been playing out and coming out, I feel like for most of you guys, this painful ending has probably involved your career. It's probably involved something with your job or money, something on that end, because everything else is very firmly been about money, you know, with the spark of the hustle and going for your dream and all this other kind of stuff. So I feel like for the rest of you, um, you're going to wind up receiving communication from an older man as well, yes, but rather than it being for a romantic type of purpose or a personal type of purpose, I feel like this older man will wind up communicating with you and reaching out because he can help you in your career. He can help you towards your dream. He can help you towards this goal, whatever it is, you know, whether he's someone who wants to be a business partner, he wants to offer you a job, he wants to invest in your business, he wants to sponsor you, um, you know, he wants you to like, um, try his product or something and talk about it. Like if you were an influencer or something like that, I just, I feel like there's an older man who is going to have some kind of ability to help you when it comes to finances and money here in your career. And, uh, yeah, you'll be getting communication from him and that's really going to help, um, when it comes towards making your dreams come true and getting on this new hustle and, you know, getting out of this slump here that you guys have kind of hit with that ten of swords with that painful ending. And it's really funny because I literally just had this one thing just go off in my head right now. And I don't know if it's going to make sense or if it's going to resonate for any of you. But 
even if it's just for one person, I'm going to say it anyways, just in case that one person who comes here needs to see this or hear this or watch this or whatever it is. But for some of you, it could be a bizarre mixture of love and money, like love and a career thing or something. Because for some of you, the communication from the older man who may want to give you money, it could even be like a sugar daddy type of scenario. <laughs> and I don't feel like that's going to be for the majority at all. I feel like that's maybe literally just one person. But I literally just had that hit me right now. Like for someone, it could literally be like a sugar daddy kind of thing. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is just from me living in LA too long and they literally have billboards there that say like the app for like sugar babies or something like that. But it, it there could be a sugar daddy situation. I'm just saying um, no, no judgment whatsoever, but I'm just saying that could be one of the possibilities too. I just want to throw all of them out there because like I said, it's a general reading. Some of these things may make may make sense for some people and not others. So like I said, take what resonates and leave the rest. Um, anyway, that was funny. Finally, you guys, I have your card here from Loving Words from Jesus because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. And you guys have... Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. So basically what this card is saying with this Bible verse is, you know, put God first. Number one, first and foremost, that relationship. That relationship that I was talking about earlier in the reading. Put your relationship with God, spirit, source, um, the divine, however you want to say it. Put that relationship number one first and foremost because if you make that a priority, you spend time in prayer with him, you really try and seek him out and understand him and how he wants to connect with you and how he wants to um, be in your life basically, he'll, he'll do that. He'll come into your life and you know, he'll make things absolutely amazing. He he wants more for you than you even want for you. Um, you know, he's like a, a, a parent basically to his children. And usually parents want so much more for their kids and even they realize it, you know. So he wants to give you the world. He wants to give you so much. But you got to put that time in and you got to put that effort with him first. You know, don't seek him for his presence, but for his presence, you know, you get it? Like, not like presents, like a gift you open at Christmas time, but for his presence, like actually sitting with him and being with him and that kind of thing. Um, you spend that time with him and you will receive those gifts, but one has to come before the other. So hopefully that helps and makes sense. Hopefully this entire reading helps and makes sense for you guys. If the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did make sense, please let me know and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you, even if it's just with a simple, small emoji. It definitely goes a long way. And please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot too. Feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. And um, also so you guys know when I'm going live too because every time I go live, you guys will get a notification about that and then you can hop on by and participate and get a reading done and it's just a good old fun time. So anyway... I am so incredibly grateful and thankful that you guys decided to stop on by and hang out here with me for a little bit today. It definitely warms my heart and means the world to me. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 3. If you chose the Angel Aura Quartz, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out what is in store for you for this coming season of springtime. Fun stuff. All right, you guys. So we are going to start things off here with your tarot cards from the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. 
And you guys got the Two of Swords, the Six of Cups, the High Priestess, and the Ace of Cups. Ooh. All right, you guys. Interesting mixture going on here. All right, we're going to start off here with the Two of Swords. So the Two of Swords is basically what I like to call being double-minded. So what I mean by that is the swords in the tarot represents our thoughts. It's basically our thought life, um, the way we think about things pretty much. And considering this unicorn has two swords, basically this unicorn is a pl in a place of indecision. So it has two different thoughts, two different ideas about something. So chances are you, the viewer, you have two different thoughts, two different ideas about something. And, you know, this could be about anything. So, you know, take it as it resonates. It's a general reading. But you, gen you probably have two different thoughts, two different ideas about something, and you're just undecided. You can't make up your mind. You're like, should I go with path A or should I go with path B? I don't know. What's the right direction for me? Where should I be going? What should I be doing? I don't know. Um, so chances are you could be starting off the spring season in a little bit of confusion, just not being able to make up your mind not being able to figure out what to do. And the problem with being double-minded like that is you don't move forward anyway being in that position. You kind of have to make up your mind. And it's just like, if you wind up being wrong, yeah, that sucks. But that doesn't mean that you can't correct it. And that doesn't mean that you can't get back on track. And who knows, you might not choose wrong as it is. And you might actually surprise yourself and choose right and have a whole bunch of amazing things happen. So um, either way, a decision needs to be made because you can't stay like this. Staying like this is just going to keep you stagnant and stationary exactly where you're at right now. Um, but I feel like one of the best ways for you guys to figure that out is to tap into your inner high priestess. And the high priestess, she is very mysterious. Um, she's not a busy body. She doesn't go around like button her nose into everybody else's business and you know she's not a gossip or a drama queen or anything like that. She kind of keeps to herself but she's highly intuitive and because she's so friggin intuitive she knows exactly what's up. She knows what's going on with everything and everybody but it's not because she's going around talking about it. She just knows. She's super intuitive. And because of that, because she's able to know what's happening with everyone else, of course she knows what's going on within herself. She knows what's best for herself because she's the high priestess. And other people may not necessarily understand her all the time. And other people may try to figure her out and that kind of thing. But um, that's simply because she's mysterious and she doesn't like super blab her own life because she's too busy taking care of her own intuition basically. So I feel like one of the ways that you guys can help break yourself out of that double-minded trap trying to make up your mind is tap into that high priestess because she knows. She has killer intuition, which means you have killer intuition. You know the answer to this dilemma deep down inside, whether you want to face it or not, but you really know. You do. You know. And I feel like for most of you guys, um, at least for this pile, it's funny because the last pile um, seemed to very much so be revolving around career and money, but you guys seem to be more so revolving around love. Um, simply because you guys also have the Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups is all about nostalgia. It's all about the past. Um, so I feel like some of the hiccups here you're having in making up your mind about something, it's connected to the past. It could be connected to past love. It could be connected to your past lives. And um, 
Yeah, there's just like a, not a, a lot of nostalgia that comes with this card. It could also be connected to your inner child. So, you know, this may be an opportunity for you to do a lot of inner child work as well. It could be connected to somebody that you knew when you were a child or who you knew when you were a teenager or, you know, just a young person in general. Um, so I definitely feel like there's some of that going on that is impacting your decisions. But I feel like you know what that right decision is. And when you make that decision, when you get there, when you get to that place, when you finally reach into your high priestess here and you let her come out and give you that answer, you guys are going to get the end result with the Ace of Cups. And the Ace of Cups is a new beginning in love, in beautiful, amazing, passionate love. So I feel like you guys are going to wind up having that, this new beginning in love. I feel like for most of you guys, it is going to be a new season of love with somebody from your past because we have that six of cups here. It's somebody that you probably already dealt with, that you already have a connection to, a history with, someone who could be connected to your inner child. Um, so for most of you, I feel like that new beginning in love is connected to someone that you already know. For others of you, it could be a new beginning in love altogether with a new person, um, but like I said, because that's because that Six of Cups is there, I do feel like for most of you, it is probably dealing with someone that you already know who this person is. You're already connected to them. They're they're tied to your past in some way, shape, or form. Um, but I feel like once again, once you guys get out of this ickiness here and let your inner high priestess come on out and make up your mind for you, you're going to find yourself in a very happy ending because you're going to find yourself in this new beautiful season of love where, I mean, look at that cup. It's overflowing. It is just overflowing with love. And I feel like that's what you guys are going to experience, a season of abundance um, in love. You know, it's, it's going to feel like you know, the butterflies are back in your stomach again. And, you know, it's going to be like that that feeling when you're first falling in love with somebody and everything just, like, feels amazing and it's just wonderful and beautiful and it's just, like, the best season, the best thing ever. Okay, we also have some cards here for you guys from the Sacred Creators Oracle. And you guys have Creator Earth. The Good Kind, and Welcome the Divine Masculine. Oh, I'm so excited for this pile, you guys. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so with Creator Earth, I feel like basically this card is saying for you guys um, that during the springtime, you guys are going to become a little bit more grounded. You guys are going to become... Um, a little bit more secure and stable that maybe prior to the spring, maybe you guys have kind of felt like you just don't have roots, that your roots just haven't taken place and you may have felt a little disconnected and a little flighty and that kind of thing. I feel like during the springtime, you guys are going to find your place, that you're going to take root with where you're really meant to be and you're going to get grounded and you're going to find security and stability is what it comes down to. So I feel like that grounding is going to be good. It's going to be there and it's going to it's going to bring this creative flow out of you. Um almost kind of like a mother earth kind of tendency. It's it's even going to bring almost a sense of like motherly love in a sense within yourself, I feel like. And with the good kind, I know this is kind of like vague in general with it just saying the good kind. But I feel like this is basically just saying that this season in your life, the springtime, is just going to be the good kind of season. It's going to be like the good kind of grounding, the good kind of stability and security, the good kind of, you know, putting your roots down, the good kind of decision that you're going to wind up making that, you know, trust yourself. You got this. You know more than you think you know. Um... So, you know, the end result, it's going to be good. It's going to be the good kind of outcome is what it comes down to. And with Welcome the Divine Masculine, I literally just told you guys, this is definitely love-related for you. So I feel like for most of you, 
once again, you're probably dealing with somebody from your past here, somebody that you're already connected to, probably your twin flame, because we are talking about welcoming in the divine masculine. So I feel like for most of you guys, it is your twin flame that you are welcoming in, um, basically in making this decision, whatever this decision is, and it's going to bring in this new season of love where the cup is just overflowing here with love and abundance because it's going to be ushering in your divine masculine. So basically, if leading up to this time, you guys have been in a season of separation, I feel like some of you guys are headed for union. That whatever this decision is that you're going to make, it's going to impact things in such a big way that it's going to bring you into union with your masculine because he is going to be welcomed in. He's going to be ready. Like maybe before he was the runner, maybe before he ghosted you, maybe before he just stopped talking altogether. <laughs> um, but I feel like that's going to change. I feel like that's going to change for some of you guys. And he is going to come right in based out of this decision here that you're going to make. You know, and I, I don't know what that decision is, but I feel like for some of you guys, you have a choice. There's a choice that needs to be made. Like, he can't come in with the way the conditions are right now because the conditions aren't right as of this moment. You probably haven't crossed over and made the decision to do whatever this thing is that you need to do completely yet. You haven't, you know, signed your name on the dotted line basically. But I feel like once you guys sign your name on, on the dotted line, once you make that commitment to whatever this decision is, he's gonna be coming in because it's like, you know, the circumstances are gonna be right for him to. It's not right right now, but it will be when you guys make that decision. And like I said, I feel like it's gonna be the good kind, the good kind of choice, the good kind of outcome. Really good stuff so far. Uh, we also have some cards here from the Ice Cream Oracle. And you guys got Protection, Purification, and Boundaries with Coconut. Cookie Dough, Building, Evolution, Development. And Orange, Enthusiasm, Confidence, and Courage. Okay, so starting with coconut, I feel like um, the springtime is also going to be a time for you guys to um, basically learn your boundaries, basically. Um, that regardless of what's happening in this love situation, you're probably going to have opportunities, whether it's in love or just in life in general. It could be with friends. It could be with family. It could be in your career. It could be in a lot of different things. But I feel like you guys will, will have opportunities to practice putting up healthy boundaries. And that doesn't mean that you build a, a wall, that you build a fortress around your heart and you don't let anyone in or anything like that. No, that's not what that means. But it doesn't mean that you put the welcome mat out and you just let anybody stomp all over it either. You know, you're, you're selective, you know. Think of it this way. It's like, if your life, if your heart is like a club, you gotta be the own bouncer to your own club in a sense. So some people you let pass by through the velvet ropes. They're acceptable. Others, you got to send them away and tell them to go home and they're not welcome in the club. So you got to be selective. You got to be choosy. You know, it's your VIP. Create your VIP list in your life, you know? So um, I feel like you guys are definitely going to be doing that. I feel like you guys are going to be learning what truly matters and protecting it. And um, yeah, I feel like there's just going to be some of that going on during the springtime. And you could be feeling more protective, especially if your divine masculine does wind up coming along. You might just feel protective of that situation just because you don't want that ruined or just because you don't want to see things go backwards. So you're just going to probably be so incredibly grateful. You're going to be grounded here enough to want to do the right thing to make sure there are the right boundaries that need to be there to protect things. But I also feel like um, you guys are going to be entering a season of confidence here. So I feel like once you guys do make that decision, once you guys do make that final decision, whatever this choice is that you guys are kind of stuck between right now, 
once you make that decision, you're going to make that decision in confidence and it's going to make you more confident because of that. It's like once you fully step into that, you're just going to know. You're going to be like, yes, I know I made the right decision for my life. There's no going back now and I wouldn't even want to go back if someone invited me to. You're just going to know. You're just going to know you made the right decision. It's going to give you confidence. It's going to give you strength. It's going to give you courage. Um, so yeah, it's just going to make you excited and enthusiastic for this new chapter in your life. You know, maybe you have felt kind of hesitant in making this decision and stepping into this new role and stepping into this new chapter of your life. But I feel like, you know, this is basically saying that, um, that hesitance is going to go away. It's just going to melt away because you guys are going to feel secure. You're going to feel confident. You're going to be enthusiastic. You're just going to be super excited for this. And I'm super excited for you because, um, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. And then you guys also have cookie dough, building, evolution, and development. So I feel like basically this is saying that once you guys, um, once again, once you make that decision whatever this decision is that you have been kind of back and forth with in your head. But once you have arrived at that place, I feel like you guys are going to wind up building and developing the life of your dreams with your divine masculine in this new season of love between the two of you. So I feel like you guys are basically going to be um, building your life together. You know, you guys are going to be probably putting up the building blocks, the foundation of your relationship, the foundation of this new beginning, basically. For some of you guys, it could even be like the two of you, like quite literally, like moving in together and creating your own little love nest kind of a thing. But whatever the case may be, I feel like you guys are going to be putting up those building blocks of that foundation and a solid and a ste steady foundation. It's not going to be like, you know, the three little pigs where it's like you have your house of hay and you have your house of sticks. No, you guys are going to be building with steady, solid, stable bricks with your masculine, with your person, because, you know, that way then you're going to have boundaries from the outside world and you'll be protecting yourselves. But I feel like you guys are really going to create a good life with this person. You're going to develop things and there is going to be this evolution. So like I said, if things have been sucky and there's been distance and there's been um, no communication or separation or whatever it is that's been wrong. I feel like that's going to wind up turning around coming into the spring season. And it's just, it's all going to start turning around. It's it's going to evolve. It's going to evolve into something that is of the good kind. The good kind of everything. All right. I also have some cards here from... Uh, Amira's Love Oracle. And, you know, for all the piles, I basically pulled some of these cards just because I intended this to be a general reading for the season, obviously. Um, and I wanted to throw in a little bit of love there as well for everybody. And for some people, it, it, there's been a little bit of love. For some, not so much. But you guys already have a lot of love here. So let's just pile some more love on top of love, I guess. And you guys have fun times. The Ice King. And spiritual growth. So I feel like most importantly, you guys are going to be growing in leaps and bounds during the springtime. There's going to be so much spiritual growth. I feel like you guys have already done a lot of spiritual growth just to get to this point. Especially if you're going to be coming into a place of union, dealing with your person, then yeah, there's definitely a lot of spiritual growth going on here. Um... But I feel like that's going to continue, you know, like that's an ongoing thing. That's something that it just doesn't stop just because, you know, we leave a more difficult season and we go into a more pleasant one. It doesn't stop. It's something that continues our entire life. But I feel like you're going to continue to see growth in your relationship spiritually 
with God, basically. So that's going to continue in the springtime. Um, with the Ice King, I feel like you're masculine in the past. This is basically what you may have been dealing with. You may have been dealing with the Ice King. Um, you know, someone who's a little bit on the cold side. Someone who, when they do speak, maybe they're a bit biting with their words. Um, but otherwise, they simply may not speak at all. They may not say anything. They may hold back, basically. So I feel like a lot of you guys may be dealing with somebody who may have been the Ice King. But I feel like you guys are going to wind up warming his heart and melting his ice caps, basically. Um... Because, you know, of all this all this other stuff, I mean, clearly something is melting here because we got an overflow of water going on. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like this Ice King, he's, he's going to be transforming in your life as well during um, the springtime. And who knows, because of everything that's going on here, the spiritual growth here could not only be just on your end, but it could be on his end too. And maybe that's another reason why he'll wind up melting a bit as the Ice King. Not just because of you, but because of his own personal journey that he is on. And the end result here is basically fun times. And it's funny because I look at this card and it reminds me of like a pre-COVID era because it looks like a concert, you know? It's like we got like all the flashing lights here, which reminds me of like, you know, people taking pictures and stuff during a concert. We've got like this group of people down here and people's have, people have their hands in the air and stuff. And it just, it reminds me of a concert. It reminds me of pre-COVID basically. And I don't know if we're going to be quite here at pre-COVID during the springtime just yet, because I know, you know, we're still rolling out the vaccine and all that other kind of stuff. We're not out of the woods yet, but I do feel like this is basically saying, just that sense of feeling uplifted and having hope, like the kind of hope that we used to have before COVID, I feel like you guys are going to find that again this springtime. That fun times are ahead. That the, the, the decision that you wind up making here with all this stuff, it's going to lead to some fun times. Fun times probably with your masculine, and I feel like fun times just in life, period, with your friends, with your family, just as a result to your choices and your own personal spiritual growth that you guys are having right now. Finally, we have a card here from Loving Words from Jesus, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away. And you guys got, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. John 10, 11. So this card is basically just a reminder to you guys that, you know, God is there for you no matter what. You know, I know that not everyone who comes to my channel or watches these videos is necessarily a Christian and you definitely don't have to be. But, you know, I choose to believe in Jesus and, you know, my relationship and my connection with him. And, you know, this is basically just saying that, you know, he did lay his life down for us because he loves us and he wants us to have a good life. And if you don't want to think of it as Jesus, just remember that, you know, the universe, spirit loves you more than you could ever possibly know and would do anything for you. And that's basically what this card is pretty much saying, that you are loved beyond measure, that you are so incredibly treasured more than you could possibly understand, that there's a reason why you're here on this earth. So never forget that. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely a really good thing too. Anyways, I hope that made sense and resonated for you guys. Um, if the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did make sense, please let me know and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you, even if it's just with a simple, small emoji. Um, otherwise, please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. Feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. 
And also so you guys know when I'm going live. And whenever I go live, you guys are welcome to join me on that. You can hop on in, get a reading. It's a really fun and good time. So yeah, I am just so incredibly grateful and thankful that you guys decided to stop on by here and hang out with me for a little bit today. It definitely warms my heart and means the world to me. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love. Hi, Pile 4. If you chose this lovely amethyst cluster, then this is going to be the reading for you to find out what is in store for you for this spring. All right. Let's see what we got going on for you guys. Starting off with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. So you guys got the Knight of Pentacles, Temperance, the Moon, and Justice. All right, so for you guys, um, I feel like spring may kind of feel a little slow for you guys, but it's not going to be slow without being productive. So what I mean by that is um, I feel like you guys are probably dealing with somebody who would be the Knight of Pentacles in your life. So I feel like for most of you guys, this is probably going to be a love-related situation. Um, but once again, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. If it makes more sense applying it to like a friend or a job situation, feel please feel free to do that. But I feel like for most of you guys, it's probably going to be love, because I know a lot of you guys come to these readings for love. Um, but anyways, with the Knight of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles, he is the slowest mover in the deck. He moves very, very slowly, but he does move. He's just slow. Um, so yeah, he moves slow, but as the saying goes, slow and steady wins the race. And he does every single time. He always completes it. He always finishes the race. He always completes the task. He always makes it through as opposed to some of the other knights who may not necessarily do that and they may kind of come and go, but he doesn't. He's stable. He's secure. He's reliable. He's just slow. Being slow is his biggest flaw. Um, and the Knight of Pentacles always comes in with a physical, genuine offer. That's usually what he has. He has a physical offer to give you. Um, so I feel like for most of you guys, you, you're probably dealing with a person who is like this, where it just seems like they are slower than molasses in terms of coming into your direction, pretty much. I feel like one of the reasons why he is so slow is because he has a lot of illusions surrounding him right now because that's what the moon is about. The moon can represent illusions, um, you know, things that we're not necessarily aware of, that we're not attuned to, that we're not picking up on. So I feel like if you guys are dealing with a Knight of Pentacles, he may be super slow simply because in a sense, he doesn't get it. <laughs> um, he doesn't see what's right in front of his face. He doesn't see necessarily what is going on. So instead of taking the direct route, he gets a little lost and he winds up taking the scenic route. He's still going to make it there, but, you know, Apple Maps is basically just going to reroute him like a million and one times. Um, because there are some illusions around the situation. The moon can also represent our intuition. So I feel like for you guys, the viewer, it's really important to tap into your intuition about your person because, you know, you're going to know if he's really going to be coming back to you or not. You're going to know if he's just like this slower than molasses dude or if he's just straight up not coming back. I feel like you guys know this deep down inside. Always trust your gut. Always trust what you know deep down inside. So 
Um, I feel like there's some of that. And with having temperance here, temperance can also be an equivalent of patience. And clearly, if you're dealing with somebody who is the Knight of Pentacles and is moving very slow and taking their sweet ass time, um, yeah, you're going to need a dollop of patience when it comes to that, basically. So I feel like you guys are, in, in a sense, going to be kind of in a season of like a like a holding cell, like a holding period kind of a thing during the spring season. And I don't want to say that means you're just going to be like sitting around waiting for somebody. In a sense, you will be. You will kind of just be waiting for someone during the springtime. That there's not going to be a lot of activity. That it's going to seem inactive, if, if anything. But I want to remind you guys that it will be active. Just not in the way you're thinking. Um... I feel like instead you guys should be spending this time in active patience, actively waiting, which means, you know, you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your own shit, you're taking care of your own things, whether it's, you know, doing things with your friends or your family, taking care of your career, your finances, your work, any of that kind of stuff. You know, springtime, like right now is like tax season, you know, that's like taking care of your own business, you know, whatever it is that you need to take care of, it's your own business. That's a time to be doing it basically is right now. That's being active in your patience because you're not throwing all of that time and all of that effort into them because they're being slow. They're not necessarily going to be there right away. So you know, that would be like if you ordered pizza and it's not going to be there for 30 minutes, but it's like the minute you ordered the pizza, then you go and sit there by the door and you just wait for it. Like, that's kind of dumb. Go do something else during the 30 minutes until the doorbell rings, you know? Um, so go do something. You know, the pizza man is coming, but you don't need to sit there and wait at the door for him. Um... So I feel like that's kind of what that is saying. And the other thing, too, is just because it seems like things are inactive with this person on a physical level, spiritually, things are moving. Things are shaking. Things are always happening on the spiritual level that we don't notice and that we don't realize and that we don't pick up on a lot of the times. So, you know, God is always working behind the scenes, even if it seems like he's not. So that's something to remember, too. Um, also, with temperance comes balance. It is kind of like a way of balancing the scales and evening things out, which makes sense because you also got the justice card, and that's exactly what it's all about. Justice is about the balancing of the scales, evening things out, wronging or righting whatever wrongs there were, they will be made right kind of a thing. Justice will be served. So I feel like at some point during the spring season, you are going to receive some justice dealing with the situation. You may be waiting for the duration of the spring. You may not actually get your justice until maybe like going into the summer, like heading out of spring into summer, but justice is going to be coming. It is headed your way. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of, um, you know, temperance here in order to get there, basically. So I, I definitely feel like you guys are probably dealing with a person who, you know, they just may be a little frustrated when it comes to things moving slow. Which, you know, that happens. And, you know, that could be in any way, shape, or form. You know, this could be someone that you're not communicating with and you're waiting for communication. Or maybe this is somebody that you're with and you're, like, waiting for them to propose to you. So, you know, take it as it resonates. It could be different for everybody. We also have some cards from the Sacred Creator's Oracle. And you guys got Sacred Mirror. Bravely market your magic and lead your metamorphosis. So I feel like with sacred mirrors, I feel like that's reminding you that this Knight of Pentacles that you're dealing with, he's probably your mirror, um, po quite possibly a twin flame because twin flames are usually mirrors of each other. But um, I feel like he's definitely your mirror 
And while he's moving slow dealing with things, this may mean that you may have some things that you may be dealing with slowly as well that you need to take care of. Hence the whole thing of take care of yourself while you're waiting for him to come forward kind of a thing. The thing that you may be dragging your feet on may have nothing to do with him at all. It could be some other area of your life, but you want to get all the areas in your life in as much balance as you possibly can, not just the area dealing with him, you know, because it's it's no fun if one area is good, but then all the others are a big mess because we only focused on that one area, you know, try to um, even that out, trying to disperse it, I guess you could say. And with um, Bravely Market Your Magic and Lead Your Metamorphosis, I feel like this is kind of telling you what you guys need to be doing while you're waiting during this season of temperance of springtime, basically. Bravely Market Your Magic and um, Lead Your Metamorphosis tells me that there is going to be change with the metamorphosis here, basically, during the springtime. Um, a much needed kind of internal change. Like I said, I feel like a lot of the activity is going to be happening more so on a spiritual level than a physical level, but the change is definitely going to be there. It's definitely going to happen. And things have to happen on a spiritual level first before it can transition onto the physical. That needs to happen. So that's an important step. You don't want to miss that, obviously. And with bravely, ma mar bleh, bravely magic, bravely market your magic. I apparently cannot form words today, um, <laughs> but with bravely market your magic, I feel like that's basically telling you guys whatever the things are that you need to do, do it. I feel like for some of you guys, it's career related, like marketing your magic. You know, I think of marketing. I think of you know like marketing your products, marketing your business, whatever it is. You know, I don't think of like, you know, marketing in terms of like a relationship. So I feel like for some of you guys, you need to focus on your career and your money and taking care of yourself with those kinds of things while he's in the process of coming in your direction. Um, because, you know, just because he comes into your life, that doesn't mean that like, oh, I, I don't have a career anymore. I don't do anything. I just worship his feet. No, you still like have your own life. You still have your own existence. You know, we should all have our own lives and our own existences outside of that person. You know, um, that person is great to have and it's great to have that person as like, a partner in life, someone to go through life's ups and downs with, but we should still have our own identity and our own existence outside of them. They're just a part of our amazing world is what it comes down to. So work on your amazing world, whatever that is, your amazing magically you type of world. We also have a few cards here from the Ice Cream Oracle. And you guys got Cherry Vanilla, Love, Passion, Relationships, Spumoni, Variety, Opportunity, and Choices, and Butter Pecan, Reason, Market, Sell. And what, this is so funny, what was I just saying, you guys? Bravely market your magic, and then you guys get a ice cream oracle card that also mentions marketing. So like I said, you guys, I feel like something that you should be busy working on while you're waiting for your person to come in with his Knight of Pentacles slow way. A lot of you guys should be working on your career, on your business, whatever that is. You know, if you run your own business, if you do your own thing, then be the big boss lady and do it. You know, be the girl boss, be that badass, slay, do the game, do the thing, work at it, hustle, market, sell, you know, whatever it is that you need to be doing, do it. Um, that's going to help in the long run for you and for him and for whatever future that you see for the two of you. So definitely do that. Um, you know, if you're not like an entrepreneur kind of person, if you don't run your own business, you're not like independent and work for yourself, you know, you work for somebody else, you work for, you know, a boss, a company, 
a job, whatever that is, whether you go physically somewhere or you work from home, it doesn't matter. Same thing, you know, slay at the position at your job that you have, you know, work hard. Who knows? Maybe on the other side of springtime, a promotion could be in store for you. A better position could be in store for you because you kicked ass so much during the spring and you threw your attention and your time into that. So it doesn't matter whether you work independently or not. This applies in any situation, in either situation. So definitely work hard at it. Um, you know, it's important to have variety here with the Spoon Money card. Variety, opportunity, and choices. It's important to take advantage of the opportunities that come your way during the springtime. Um, you know, don't just sit idly by and, like I said, basically wait for the pizza delivery boy to come with your pizza. Do something while you're waiting for him to come. He will come. He will deliver and he will get you your pizza a love, basically. He'll get you that. But in the meantime, don't miss out on the opportunities that are currently happening in front of you. Don't forget to enjoy the spice of life, which is variety around you. And that doesn't mean that you have to like go out and date other people if that's not what you're interested in. If your heart is with somebody else, if your heart is dedicated elsewhere, that's totally fine. You know, just go out with friends, go out with friends, work on your job, do other things in your life. You know, we're multifaceted human beings. You know, yes, we are wired up for love. We are wired up for relationships and connections with others, especially that special bond with that special person. But it's important to have other special bonds outside of that person, you know, so work on those, work on those connections, whether they're at work or whether they're in other areas of your per personal life. It's a good time to work on those things because once, you know, Mr. Knight of Pentacles here, once he does finally show up and ring your doorbell and say, your pizza is here, I have brought you the pizza of love, you know, you're probably going to be so busy eating his pizza, basically, um, you're not really going to be interested in, <laughs> in those other connections. Um, well, not that you're not going to be interested in them, but it probably just won't be your top priority during that, I guess you could say, honeymoon phase or whatever it is that's going on. So, you know, spend some time, dedicate some time to those areas of your life now. Because um, it's just, it's good to have a well-balanced overall kind of life, pretty much, is what it comes down to. And with Cherry Vanilla, love, passion, relationships, I feel like this is basically just confirming what I was already talking about. From the beginning, I did feel like that this reading was definitely going to be about love, because um, like I said, I, I feel like there's definitely a love thing going on here because of that Knight of Pentacles. And I feel like for most of you, your Knight of Pentacles is that significant other, that divine counterpart, whatever you want to call it, however you want to put it. I feel like it's definitely that person. And like I said, I did leave this reading to be open, to be general for anything, um, I think it was Pile 2, actually. Pile 2 was, like, the one that was, like, big on career, and there really wasn't anything that came through in that pile whatsoever for love. Um, but, uh, you know, you guys are, are big on the love. Pile 3 was big on the love. Um, pile 1 was a mixture of both. So, you know, it just, it just depends. Um, every pile has its own unique thing. But, you know, that's the thing when I leave it open to be general like this. I never know what's going to come through. But you guys definitely have a thing coming through here dealing with love. Um, but your love story, funny enough, even though you guys got love and Pile 3 got love, your love story is different from their love story. So, you know, it's, it's all unique and it's all different. Anyways, continuing on with this tangent about love, we also have some cards here from Amira's Love Oracle to get a little bit more insight when it comes to your love situation. Because um, I was going to throw these cards in anyway, whether a lot of love came out here or not. But like I said, I know a lot of you guys come to these readings because you are seeking to find answers regarding your love situations. And hopefully that's what's happening here. And hopefully you're getting some insight with that. So the first card you guys got is Past Life. 
So I feel like one of the reasons why your Knight of Pentacles here is as slow as he is is because there is so much history between the two of you. You guys pr probably have been through many lifetimes before together, which once again would probably indicate to me that you're probably dealing with a twin flame. But yeah, um, I feel like you're definitely dealing with somebody here who you have experienced many past lives with before. You've been here, you've done this many, many times, and um, that's probably one of the reasons why he's as slow as he is, because it's like he's not only just clearing out garbage from what you guys have been dealing with with this lifetime, but he's even trying to sort through shit from past lives that he doesn't even realize is there, that he doesn't even realize it's going on kind of a thing, but that's what he's kind of sorting through. And um, aside from past lives, uh, this could also be um, an indicator that you guys have a significant and lengthy past, even in this present lifetime here and now, which could be, once again, another benefiting reason why this is taking so long to come through, because there could just be a lot of history that needs to be sorted through, you know? And that takes time. It takes a lot more time than it's like, hey, I've only known you for five minutes, so let's review the past five minutes. That doesn't really take very long. Um, you guys also have young female. So I feel like for a lot of you guys, this is basically confirming that this is probably you. This is probably the person who's viewing this video, who is probably watching this. Um, this is probably just confirmation, just characteristic wise on who you probably are. You're probably a young female, either that, or if you are a masculine who is watching, because I know every once in a while, a masculine does stumble across these videos. And if you are, hello, welcome. I appreciate you too. <laughs> um, but if you are a man asking about a woman, um, this could be basically imply the woman that you are thinking about, the woman that we're talking about here. So that could be a possibility as well. Um, and if you're watching this and you're like 50 years old and you're like, I'm not a young female, what are you talking about? I'm beyond my prime. Well, you know what? Take, take it this way then. You're probably young at heart. You're probably someone who is complimented a lot on how they look. You're probably somebody who um, people think is at least a good like 10 years younger than what you really are kind of a thing. So you're probably young at heart, you know, that kind of a thing. So I feel like you're that kind of a person. If you're like physically older, your your soul, um, your spirit is probably just like young and full of life and that kind of thing. So either way, you know, just take it as it resonates. And finally, we have soulmate. And I know there is actually a twin flame card um, in this deck, which you guys didn't get, but you guys did get the soulmate card. And I mean, maybe you guys know that this really is your twin flame. Just because you got the soulmate card doesn't mean it's like, oh, guess what? They're not, they're not your twin flame. They're actually just a soulmate. Um, that's not what that means. If you know that you know that you know that your person is your twin flame, then you know that, you know, no... No card coming out here is going to determine that for you. But it could be possible that maybe on the flip side, you're someone who doesn't necessarily know what this person is to you. And maybe that this is a confirmation to you that this person is a soulmate. And, you know, here's just a little newsflash, you guys. Soulmate relationships are actually a lot easier than twin flame relationships. So, um, you know, having a soulmate relationship is actually not a bad thing. It is a good thing. But either way, at the end of the day, they're just labels. Whether you call it a twin flame or soulmate, they're just labels. Um, I think the bottom line is, though, with the combination of having this card and having the past life card, I feel like this is basically just confirmation that you guys do obviously have that extensive history. And because of that, you have a strong soul tie, that this is a strong soul connection, that this is definitely not something that is broken, that this is definitely something that you guys have done many, many times before. So it is definitely a strong soul connection, no matter what, no matter what label you want to put on it. It is something that is solid regardless. 
Finally, we have your card from a loving words from Jesus, because in my opinion, a Bible verse a day helps keep the bad vibes away, and you guys got... Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, Mark 4, 11. So, um, you know, it's kind of funny. We got Jesus looking up at the stars here, and it almost kind of reminds me of like star seeds in a sense because he is looking up at the sky. He is looking up at the infinite sky of stars, basically. And, um, you know, sometimes life and sometimes the universe can seem like quite a mystery at times. It's so wide and it's so expansive. But, um, you know, all those mysteries, all those unknowns, you truly know the answers to that all within your heart and all within your soul because of your own connection and your own relationship basically with the divine. So all you got to do is tap into that all you got to do is tap into that intuition and, you know, you can have the keys to success in your life and abundance and blessing and favor and so many beautiful and good things. Whether it's with your person and this specific situation or pretty much anything. Um, anyways, I hope that made sense for you guys and helped you out. If the message did not flow, of course, just let it go. But if it did make sense, please let me know and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you, even if it's just with a simple, small emoji. Um, it definitely goes a long way. And please give this video a big thumbs up. That definitely helps me out a lot. And feel free to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know of future videos when they are on the way. And also so you guys know when I'm going live, because whenever I go live, you guys will get a notification about that. And then you can hop on in, join in on that fun and excitement, get a reading done. It's just a really good and fun time overall. So, uh, yeah. I am just so incredibly grateful and thankful that you guys decided to stop on by here and hang out with me for a little bit today. It definitely warms my heart and means the world to me. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Keep sparkling. I am sending you lots of hugs and much love.